everybody, it's Seth and Paul for the Everything Money channel. Today, we are looking at what to look for when you're buying a stock. But first, we're going to like our own video, take a moment of likeness. Please smash that like button yeah! so that Paul can pay me more money and my kids can go and to college. And that's 100% true. That's 100% true. <laughs> and Don too, our producer Don. Don't forget about Don. We are gonna, I'm glad you searched us and found us today. We are going to show you the top things to look for when you're buying a stock. Paul Gabriel, owner of... Uh, $100 million in real estate and over 20 companies over the last 10 years. Paul, tell us what to look for when we're buying a stock. What are we looking for? Go for it. So we're looking at Nike today. And the reason we're looking at Nike is Nike is a very famous company. Everybody knows like Nike. 99% of people love Nike. So I thought it'd be a great idea to sit there and say, we can love the company. Now let's see if we can love the stock, right? I know you wear K-Swiss because you've moved into dad bod mode. <laughs> When you're mowing the lawn. I love my K-Swiss. He wears the the, the white New Balance when he mows the lawn. But go ahead, Paul. So this is Nike. Um, What we're looking for here is, unlike most people, most people are going to look at the chart. I couldn't care less about the chart. Paul, I don't even look at the chart. I just look at the price. And $100 seems seems great to me. It's a stock and I can can afford. It's funny you mentioned that. When we were in high school and the stock market was booming, I had Algebra 2 Trig. And our valedictorian asked the teacher if he'd like to own Nike stock. And the teacher said, I'd love to, it's just too expensive. And I remember back then thinking to myself, why is it too expensive? And that's, I didn't realize back then I was a value investor, but that question should have been an indication. But either way, I never look at the chart. I never look, I didn't, don't say I don't look at the price. I look at the price and how it relates to what's behind the company. So I go to the financials. Now guys, the financials seem daunting. It seems kind of scary to look at financials. I'm confused already, Paul. Yes, so... Break it down. I have something called Y charts. It gives me all the data I need. You don't have Y charts. It costs money, but Yahoo Finance and Google Finance will show you the exact same numbers. You can get this all for free on the internet. You can even go to the company. Their website will give you all these numbers for free. So don't get worried that I'm using Y charts. I just use it because it's my service. So one of the things I want to look for when I buy a company is I want to look for increasing revenue over time. So in 2010, Nike did $19 billion in revenue, right? Okay. Then they did 20, then 23, then 25, then 27, 8, 30 and a half, 32, 34. Do we see a pattern here forming people? Consistent growth. Consistent growth. It's not a ton, but it's consistent. Over 10 years, they've doubled. That's about 7% per year. Is that right? Yes, that's right. About 7% per year. Nothing astronomical. You look at a company like Tesla and Facebook, they're growing like 30% a year. Nike's growing seven. I like that because it's not sexy, so people don't like that very much. Then I go to net income. Look at this, guys. We go 1.9 billion in profit. 2.1 in profit. By the way, net income is basically profit. 2.2 in profit. 2.5, 2.7, 3.3, 3.8. What are we seeing here, people? Drop here, back right up, back up. What are we seeing here? What is net income? And is, is Net income pro- is your revenue minus all your expenses to operate, to pay, and your income taxes. So this is after tax and money as well. So like when you make $100,000 in a year and you pay 30% in taxes, your net income is essentially $70,000 comparing it to a company. Okay. After tax profit. What do we see here? What's happening here, Seth? Consistent growth. And the thing I like, it's slightly better... Revenue doubled in 10 years. This is slightly better than that. It slightly did better than than, than doubled. You're right. Which is is great. I like to see, I like to see profit going up faster than revenue because it should, because your profit margin, not to get too complicated when you're, I I don't want to see, I don't want to see it cost more money for a company to make more revenue. Mm -hmm. I want it to, I want it to be a higher profit of growth than revenue growth. So that's the first thing I look for. So right now, Nike already passed this good sniff test. It's growing every year consistently. Its profit's growing consistently every single year. So what do I do then? I go to a wonderful thing called the balance sheet. What is a balance sheet, people? The balance sheet basically shows you the snapshot of all of the assets and liabilities of the company at any given time. Assets what what are, are assets and liabilities? Assets are the stuff, the things they have, cash, buildings, inventory, all those things that you can basically touch or use to in cash in the account. Liabilities are stuff you owe. For your personal life, your assets would be your bank account, your house, your cars, etc. Your liabilities would be your credit cards, your mortgage, uh, your car payments, etc. Same thing with a company. Their assets are all their cash in hand, all their buildings, all their inventory, all their stuff. 
and the liabilities of the money they owe for leases to banks, to investors, things like that. That's the money they all owe. So one of the main things I want to do is there's a thing called current assets. Current assets is everything that they have that can be converted to cash very quickly and very easily. Okay, Nike has $16.5 billion in current assets. That's a lot. So then you sit there and say, well, how does that compare? Well, what I want to look at is, what do they owe currently? Well, right now they owe, in current liabilities, which is money they owe very quickly, 7.9. Half of that. Half that. That's a great thing. So as an example, as you as a person, if you had $16,000 in your bank account and immediate bills and everything, you owed 7000 Are you okay? Yeah. You're fine. You're great. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's what I love to see. Now, even better for Nike, and this is a very rare case, but even better for Nike, their total liabilities is about $15 billion. That includes what they owe currently. So as an example, comparing it to you and your personal finance. Sure. If you have $16,000 in your bank account, all your current debts are $7 billion, seven and a half, seven, sorry, $7,500, and your mortgage and your car, pay, your car, what you own, everything is a total of 14.7. You could pay it all off and still have... And still have money left over, and you'd still be generating money every single month from your job. Same thing. This is very rare, guys. This doesn't happen very often, but this is a very, very good thing for Nike. They're very solid financially. I have no concerns about Nike going under anytime soon. What are some companies you are concerned about? Tesla. <laughs> I mean, Tesla just doesn't have m- enough money to pay their bills currently. They keep borrowing more and more money. It's just a downward spiral. Yes, their revenue is growing, but they're having a hard time getting it to the bottom line. So how does this relate to price and okay. whether this is a good or bad buy? So when I look at these things, I also want to look at one more thing. Seth, if you don't mind. Sure. Free cash flow. What is that? Thank you. Free cash flow is the money the business gets after they pay for their capital expenditures. Now, what's a capital expenditure? That's what they do to invest back into their business, essentially. Their, 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 their inventory, their, their business, their property, plant, and equipment, things like that. I want to see their cash from operations. That means how much money they generate last year in cash from running the business. They generate about $6 billion dollars. They spent 1.1 of that on capital expenditures. So they had free cash flow of about 4 billion, 3.9, er, I did that wrong, 4.8, 4.9 billion dollars in free cash flow. That's the money they're going to use to pay investors, to grow their business, and use that money to keep investing back in themselves. Is that a good amount compared to their revenue, their net income? So what I like to see is I want to see a low percentage of capital expenditures to operations as low as possible. What's the right number? I don't want to see this number being 80% of their cash from operations. I want it to be much lower. And the reason being is, if they have to spend a lot of money to grow their business, that means over time, it's going to cost, it's it's, it's a very expensive business to to, to operate. Mm -hmm. If anything happens to their operations, they're not going to be able to invest back in their business, it'll be a downward spiral. But they're they're less than 20% of their cash from their business is being spent to, to keep their business growing. That's incredible. I love that. I'm going to keep looking for opportunities like that. Does that mean if this was half, I'd say no? No, of course not. I mean, if you look at their history, they've had times when it's been pretty high. I mean, not really, actually. Nike's a very good company. <laughs> they do very well, you know, making sure that they... But they also have high margins. There's always the joke of a $150 pair of shoes cost them 10 bucks. I don't know if that's really true, but it's not a... I mean, they have a very high margin, and we're going to look at that next. So right now... This company passes a very high-level sniff test. This is, it's funny. Most investors would never even do this, and this is my first step. So what are the, five, what are the four or five key points that we've looked at so far? Revenue growth, profit growth over the last 10 years, profit growth being a little bit better than at least as much as revenue growth. Then I'm going to go to the balance sheet, make sure, sure they have enough money on hand to pay their current bills, and then see how much money they have on hand relative to all their bills, their total debt. It doesn't have to beat it. It doesn't have to be higher like Nike is. It happens to be an extreme. Then I go to the cash flow statement and see how much cash, free cash flow are they generating by taking their cash from operations and subtracting out their capital expenditure. Keep going. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go to their main screen. So ironically, I don't go to the main recap screen until after I've looked at these things. So return on equity. 
What That's is, a big thing for me. What is that? What return are they getting on the equity of their business? Like how much is their net income divided by the total equity in their business? So let's say you have, let's say you have a business where you have a million dollars invested in the business. That's your equity in the business. They're able to make 47% returns on that. Yes. Wow. So what did you, your faces do there? Yeah, Seth? lit your up. Eyes, I mean, it sounds, what, like uh, a lot, sounds like a good return. Correct. So Ben Graham... The value, father of value investing always said you should never invest in a company unless it's doing at least 12 or 15% return on equity. They're doing 47%. Amazing. That's a huge number. Okay. Now, here's where we have a problem. What is that? This is the PE ratio. Yeah. Everybody knows what PE ratio is, but I'm going to explain it anyhow. I was really good at PE in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Hitting bombs, shooting hoops. Keep going. What is it? Did I beat you in basketball? PE is price. Over earnings. Okay, guys. Price this is a stock over yep, total price, earnings? So, yep. Earnings is not revenue or this is earnings, earnings revenue? Earnings is or profit. Profit, okay. 38 is very high. So this is our big mwah, but <laughs> yeah, do it. Oh, wait, I got the wrong one. You got the wrong one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> now, this is high. Why is that? I don't know. The market's very crazy. But look at look at the look at the price. Why is that number high? What is what what is that? There's a million reasons why it could be. No no no. I'm actually, why is it 38? So historically, on average, the average company in the stock market should be around 15. Okay. Now, can you justify paying higher amounts for very fast growing companies? Absolutely. Is Nike a very fast growing company? No. Consistent, no. but not 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 quickly. Now, someone make the argument, as I would, that maybe a very consistent big company should have a higher PE, but 38 is still very very high. If you look at history and go read back on value investing, they would tell you to start shorting companies that are north of 30. So uh, with all the positivity that you've talked about Nike, how, is that num- how and why is that number that high? It could be many reasons. People could be saying, oh, I want a safe company right now. I want to have a company that's going to be around for a long time. So, they, so they went, everybody went and bought Nike. If you look at their price, it jumped up from 60-something to 103 in the last two or three months. Granted, everybody's done a big jump. But I look at it going, oh boy, this is way too high. So... My standpoint is, I'm not buying Nike now. However, I'm going to watch Nike's price because eventually it will fall to the price level that will work it for me. Everybody always says, oh, what if it never falls? It always does. No company's ever the leader forever. No company's ever expensive forever. No company's ever cheap forever. I shouldn't say that. No companies like this that have good foundations are ever going to... There's always ebbs and flows. The, the great companies of 20 years ago, look at GE. 30 years ago, you were told buy GE and walk away. You were told buy Citigroup and walk away. You'd be fine. Now look at it. Citigroup and GE are both struggling to stay in business. Nike will sell at a good price someday. The good news is they operate a good business. They have a good balance sheet. They have good cash flow. You'll want to buy this at some point. Is 15 the right number for it, for PE? Probably not. Would I be willing to pay a premium for Nike? Yeah, I would be. So after all the positives, is PE holding you back? Yeah, PE is enough for me not to buy it. Hmm. If this was sub-20... I might be thinking about it. I might be looking at it going, okay, let's go do the numbers. And then what I'd do then is I'd put it in a model. I would make some projections on growth numbers, profit numbers, profit margin. Their gross profit margin is really good, 47%. Bottom line after taxes, 9%. Not the greatest, but not bad. They pay a dividend about 1% a year, which by the way, as the price drops, this dividend will go up. I look at this stuff saying, okay, there's potential here, but I got to get, I, remember, if you buy the right company at the wrong price, you've made a bad investment. People always forget that in the investing world. When you look at a stock, there's a difference between the stock and the business. You have to figure out how they work together. Just like recession and stock market and economy and stock market, same with price, the stock and the business. The business can be wonderful, the stock price can be bad. This is a stock price that's bad, even though the business is wonderful. Most people think, oh, the business is great, buy it at any price. I do not. Value investors and the greatest investors of all time will say to you, you have to buy the right business at the right price. As Warren Buffett always say, if you pay too much for the right business, you will make a bad investment. I don't think he says exactly that, but I'm basically, I'm basically paraphrasing, right? So my goal here is to buy the business, a great business at a good price. That's it. It's very simple. This is a great business at a bad price. That's it. Thanks for joining us on the Everything Money Podcast. Smash that like button below. Follow Paul and I as Paul goes over many, many stocks on the whiteboard. We have a podcast twice a week. We love having you as a follower, and we thank you for your support. Follow the Everything Money podcast. Thanks, Paul.